Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Five Questions with the Paulist Fathers. I'm Mike Hayes. And you know, during the holiday season, it is always a great time to be in New York City. At least that's what I think. And uh, that means I'm going to head out to St. Paul the Apostle, the Mother Church of the Paulist Fathers, my old parish, as a matter of fact. And we're going to talk to Father Paul Rosband. Father Paul, how are you? Well, I'm uh, pretty good today. Pretty good. And we're expecting some lovely snow. Oh, nice. Uh, here in Cleveland, Ohio, also. Um, okay. And yeah, as I said, it's always fun to be in the New York City area for the holidays. So question one, in what way is it different this year with the pandemic? No tourists. Where are you? Uh, the tourist crowds make everything uh, much more festive. And no theater. That's, um, wow. But not only a lack of Broadway, but lack of the Nutcracker, uh, Handel's Messiah sing-along. I love to do that one. Um, I learned the bass part way back in uh, university chorus. Yeah. And going to Handel's Messiah in December, it's like an Advent retreat, because it's all, all scripture all from uh, the prophet Isaiah. So I miss those things. Question number two, what's the one thing that you won't forget about ministering to people during the pandemic? The funerals. Yeah. It's, um, wow, a funeral with a limited number of people. A funeral where it's not a good idea to comfort people with a hug or even uh, shake hands. Uh, a funeral where you probably shouldn't be together. Father Eric's mother went to uh, a funeral last month and the lunch that followed and I think eight of the 16 people at the lunch got COVID. Um, Mrs. Andrews is recovering, thanks be to God, but it was uh, very hard. So the first um, COVID uh, funeral I had was in April, and it took about five weeks to get the ashes. And when we went up to St. Raymond's, uh, they let me get out of my car, but they didn't let the four people from the family get out of their car but they were just close enough to see the casket lowered into the grave. And it was a kind of a chilly, windy day, and I had to really uh, talk very loud uh, to be heard. But I was very, very glad to do that. The man who died was uh, an old-time, old-time parishioner. So uh, old-time, in fact, that my uncle, Father Ed Petruca, who was on the staff here around 1960, presided at their wedding in that year. So I was uh, just very glad that I even could be there at all. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, the heart, the heart. I had also had a COVID funeral for uh, a nurse and his uh, husband um, came to arrange it. And it was a great opportunity to uh, reach out. Uh, this man had been raised as a Catholic and it was a, a good uh, opportunity to reconnect and help him be reconciled with God and the church and take communion at his partner's funeral. Mm. But again, no uh, embraces and uh, very, very small uh, crew for a man who was very social and would have had a lot of people at the funeral. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's been really hard. You know, my, my mom died a couple of weeks ago and the um, funeral was just me and my sister because I, you know, I, I, I told my cousins, I said, look, it's, it's just not safe to have all these people. And my sister's compromised in some ways with her own health. So I said, wait, we can't risk this. And they're, they're like, yeah, no, you're right. Um, and so, thank God for live streams, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And in ministry, well, uh, this very 20th century guy learned how to use Zoom. And, <laughs> and uh, 
I'm enjoying the uh, Apostolus, that's the, our young adult group, um, Bible studies with them. And we're planning a uh, virtual retreat for Out at St. Paul's, our gay lesbian ministry. Nice. So we're trying to um, stay in touch with our folks and uh, continue our work best we can. Yeah. And so give me your own isolation survival kit. You know, what's your favorite, you know, food, book, Netflix binge, whatever gets you through? Um, well, actually, I've been eating less because in our big rectory, we decided it was not really um, a good idea to uh, pass the plates and sit close together. Uh, yeah. So we're sitting further apart in our very large dining room and we're serving one another. So some nights I'm the waiter, some nights I'm the table. And because the platter is not there to dig in, um, I'm not eating as much. And I get restless, so I take long walks in Central Park. And I actually lost weight during the pandemic. Wow. Go figure. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, the other thing, I, I suppose any different month I have a different go-to reading detective novels. Uh, sometimes that's what I'm mostly doing. Other times I'm, I find something on uh, Netflix. Well, in the uh, spring, I, I was watching a bunch of curious um, foreign uh, detective stories. And the most memorable for me was a Spanish uh, program called Mar de Plástico, Sea of Plastic. And it's about uh, some murders that happen in this uh, big uh, area of plastic greenhouses in southern Spain. And from there, because I watched that, Netflix correct, connected me with Irish detectives and Finnish and even Icelandic. Uh, so, and Australian. There's a lot out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Um, it's interesting, you know, when you're bilingual, it opens up a whole new world for you in, in terms of watching television even, which is great. Well, in uh, a Finnish, I rely on the, uh, yeah. the notes <laughs> of translation. <laughs> yeah. Father Paul, I, I know, you know, I've been watching the, the live streams at St. Paul the Apostle for a while, and you know, your voice is really calming and soothing all the time, especially when you preach. Um, how, how do you prep to preach in a pandemic? I mean, is that something you always have to mention? Do you just mention it sometimes? Are there times you never mention it? Just sometimes. Um, I don't want to think about it all the time. But, of course, we need to think about the context uh, where we're living, what's ha happening um, around us, and just pay attention to that. And I've had some homilies out of just paying attention. So one was about um, uh, the liturgy and what we do in the church and noticing uh, what was happening at the Black Lives Matter uh, marches. There was chanting, we chant in church. There was kneeling, Catholics do that at mass. There were litanies, we have litanies of saints, they have litanies of people who've been murdered, um, and the people of God. And it was especially um, impressive uh, considering that uh, this just comes up out of the people. There's no real um, national organizations that sponsored those marches and no real leaders. Mm. Uh, but somehow the people emerged and they made their own liturgy of the streets. So I was uh, talking about how, uh, what can the liturgy of the streets teach us about our liturgy in church? And what can our liturgy grounded in that mystery of Christ uh, give us something to share to the people who are on the streets? Very cool. Hmm. And so finally, question five is, you know, what's, what's one thing that you're going to do right away once the pandemic is over that you can't do now? Um, reunions, 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 family reunions. Uh, go with friends to the theater. Um, yeah. Beach party at the Jersey Shore. 
a lot of things like that. Lovely. <laughs> things with people, touch people, hold hands, hug. Yeah, sounds familiar. Probably what we'll do here too. <laughs> and maybe I'll get out there. I'll be part of that reunion with you. That'd be great. Excellent. Yeah. So this has been five questions with the Paulist Fathers. I'm Mike Hayes. He's Father Paul Rossbond at St. Paul the Apostle in New York. And uh, we'll see you all soon.